Sometimes writers of a cartoon get the urge to explore themes other than just straight-up comedy, especially when that's all they've written for the past hundred-something episodes. Sometimes they sneak in darker themes and jokes hoping to fly under the radar, and other times they're just given straight-up permission to write a really dark and messed up episode, usually as a what-if or just a dream kind of thing. So today, we're going to be looking at 8 unexpectedly dark episodes in cartoons. These episodes can be depressing, cynical, or downright horrific. Whatever it is, it's out of the norm. So without further ado, let's begin. Dexter destroys his own lab. Anybody who has seen Dexter's laboratory knows that his lab is his pride and joy in life. Nothing is more important to him. So to see him destroy it willingly is rather shocking and upsetting. And in the episode Way of the Dee Dee, he does just that. The episode focuses on Dexter becoming more and more fed up with Dee Dee destroying his lab in pretty much every episode. She attempts to convince him that it's just her way of expressing herself, and then seeks to show Dexter her ways of finding inner peace. And up until now, Dexter has always been secluded and lonely. So he takes her up on that and attempts to learn. Toil away, alone in the dark, searching for answers to questions nobody asked. Locked away from the world, never to explore the true mysteries of life. However, Dexter gets carried away with this new lifestyle, and ends up destroying the one thing that truly makes him happy, his lab. Dee Dee blames herself for his change and runs off crying, leaving Dexter alone to realize what he's done. As the episode ends, we see him sitting alone in his lab, slowly repairing it, as the camera very quietly zooms out. He is alone, joyless, and devoid of enthusiasm, just as he was before. And this episode is really dark and depressing because it gives some insight into Dexter's character that we don't usually see. We see that he wants to be happy, but he just doesn't fit the fold of normality. He gets too carried away with things, leading to his isolation. In the end, maybe he's just meant to be isolated from the rest of the world, and the one place that truly understands him, his lab. Adventure Time's depressing backstory. What started out as a simple show about a boy and his magic dog playing video games, exploring dungeons, and dancing with cloud people sure has turned into one hell of a plot-heavy show, hasn't it? Adventure Time, at this point, is no stranger to depressing moments, with the most notable being the Ice King and Marceline's backstory. However, the backstory of the entire show is proving to be one of the most depressing aspects of it, and all that came together in the episode Evergreen. This episode takes place 65 million years before the series begins, and follows a nice elemental named Urgence Evergreen and his poorly treated apprentice, Gunther. Gunther idolizes Evergreen and wishes to become just like him, but he is usually scolded by his master. At a meeting with the other elementals, we find out that a green meteor is heading towards the Earth and is set to make contact. Evergreen insists that they use a magic crown that can grant the wearer's wish to destroy the meteor, but the other elementals are against it because they fear it will corrupt him. We reject your plan, Urgence Evergreen. Very well then, you leave me no choice. He ends up freezing them and then goes ahead with his plan anyways. When the meteor strike is imminent, Evergreen is attacked, leaving him unable to put the crown on. He orders Gunther to wear it and wish for the meteor to vanish, but his only wish is to be like his master. He is morphed into a strange version of Evergreen, one that looks suspiciously like the Ice King. He shoots ice magic left and right while screaming, Gunther, no! We then cut to the Ice King, revealing that this is all a recurring dream he's been having. What's really depressing about this is that the Ice King has been pulled into Gunther's childlike wish, turning him into an idolized caricature he sees of Master Evergreen. The Ice King names all his penguins Gunther as well. Furthermore, it's heavily implied that the meteor was the Lich, the main antagonist of the series and the cause of the apocalypse. It could have all been prevented had Gunther not put on the crown. Everybody pushes Bart Simpson to suicide. The Simpsons is known for its use of black comedy and sometimes depressing endings to episodes, but they always knew how to keep things balanced between lighthearted and serious. Well, most of the time. The season 18 episode, The Boy's a Bummer, is an extremely dark and cynical episode for an otherwise lighthearted comedy. The story starts with Bart, successfully getting his Little League team into the championship game. 
at the championship against Shelbyville. Springfield is leading 5-2 in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, while Shelbyville has the bases loaded. A pop fly heads towards Bart, who fails to catch it, and then repeatedly is unable to pick it up, allowing for all four runners to score, causing them to lose the entire game. The whole crowd turns on Bart, yelling and booing at him, and even throwing beer bottles. Chief Wiggum picks him up in his police car, appearing to be escorting him away from the hatred, but actually just drives him back onto the field so the crowd can continue to throw beer at him. He's back! Go nuts, everyone! <laughs> His failure is broadcasted all over town on the radio, and he is continuously being mocked and sneered at, actually causing him to burst into tears. The next day, a now deranged bar has spray painted, I hate Bart Simpson on almost everything in town. A crowd of townspeople find him on top of a water tower, and he jumps off in a suicide attempt while the crowd actually cheers him on. He survives and is taken to the hospital. And just when he thought Bart's suffering was over, the crowd actually stands outside of the hospital window chanting Bart sucks. That's right, this crowd of fully grown adults are still harassing a 10 year old boy they drove to attempt suicide for a damn little league baseball game. Now in the end they do all apologize and they set up a fake game so Bart can feel good about himself again, but it doesn't erase what this town did in the slightest. It's kinda hard to look at Springfield the same way after this episode. It received a lot of negative reviews from fans and critics alike due to its unnecessarily cynical and distasteful content. And as they point out in the episode, it really does seem like Springfield is the meanest town in America. Now thanks to you, my special little guy will be haunted by this for the rest of his life. I always thought that was just a slogan to attract small businesses. Tom nearly goes to hell. Despite being cartoon full of comedic slapstick violence, sometimes things can get a little too far in Tom and Jerry. This is especially evident in the episode Heavenly Puss, in which Tom almost goes to hell. The episode begins, as usual, with Tom chasing Jerry. However, the dark themes hit you in the gut when Tom is killed by an upright piano. He goes to heaven and is met by a feline St. Peter. And before he is judged, St. Peter admits three kins who were drowned in a bag. God. He then turns to Tom and tells him that he is not allowed into heaven because of his constant tormenting of Jerry, unless he can get him to sign a certificate of forgiveness. If he can't, then, well, he'll burn in hell forever. <laughs> Back on Earth, Tom finds out that he has a limited amount of time to get Jerry to sign, and when Jerry refuses, Tom tries to forge his signature, but is caught by St. Peter. He bribes Jerry, but that doesn't work, leading Tom to attack him. The devil cheers him on, which strikes fear into his heart, and causes him to act more compassionately. As time runs out, Tom frantically tries to tell Jerry about his situation. Literally down to the last second, Jerry agrees and signs the paper. But the pen doesn't work. After a few attempts, it works, and Tom runs up to heaven, but time runs out, the escalator disappears, and Tom falls to hell, where the devil is ready to torture him for all eternity. Luckily, it all turns out to be just a dream, much to Tom's relief. He goes to hug and kiss Jerry, much to his confusion, but just lets it happen. Dream or not though, it's still a pretty messed up episode. I mean, doing everything you can to redeem yourself, only for it all to be for nothing in the end is a very depressing thought. Not to mention the use of hell and the devil being really freaky in a slapstick show about a cat and a mouse. Oh, and those kittens that were drowned. That's sad as hell. Stan sees everything as shit. If for some reason you haven't seen a single episode of South Park before, don't go into it thinking that dark themes and humor are a rarity for the series. Those moments are pretty much its life force and the reason why most people watch the show. But its inclusion on our list today is for a different type of dark. Things get a little too real in the season 15 episode, You're Getting Old. The basic premise is that after Stan's 10th birthday, he starts to see the world differently and loses interest in pretty much everything. To put it more bluntly, he starts to see everything as shit. Literal shit.
he can't enjoy modern music, movies, TV shows, or anything, the other boys start seeing him more as a major buzzkill and no longer want to hang out with him. Stan has a major falling out with Kyle and they stop being friends. And on top of all of this, his parents, Sharon and Randy, have been fighting and decide to get a divorce. The episode ends to Fleetwood Mac's landslide as we see a montage of the entire show's dynamic changing. And unlike most episodes in the series, things don't go back to the way they were. The changes in this episode lasted for a good long while. For a show that many saw as a comedic escape from the real world, this episode really messed with a lot of people. It essentially said that nothing is forever, people change. When you get older, your tastes change and it can feel like your entire identity and world are falling apart. Some also saw it as a metaphor for how Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the showrunners, felt about South Park, and were worried it might be the end of the series. However, the two debunked these rumors, stating that the show still has a long life ahead of it. And so far, it looks like the show's not slowing down. But one has to wonder, was it really their decision or Comedy Central's? Phineas and Ferb are imprisoned in solitary confinement. One of the major reoccurring jokes in Phineas and Ferb is their sister Candace always trying to bust her brothers to their parents for all the crazy things they do in the backyard. Every single time, some crazy act of God happens where whatever insane project the boys are working on in the episode completely disappears by the time Candace gets her mom to see. Well, almost every time. In the episode Phineas and Ferb get busted, Candace finally busts her brothers when they build a flying car in the backyard. Their mother is stunned that Candace has been telling the truth the entire time and quickly becomes angry at the boys. They send Phineas and Ferb away to a reformatory school. Upon arriving, their heads are shaved and are taught that creativity is wrong and something to be punished for. Candace soon finds herself missing her brothers and decides to break them out of the school. However, when she gets there, she discovers that Phineas and Ferb's souls have been broken and they are unwilling to leave. She is eventually able to break them out of their trance, but it's soon revealed that this has all been a dream and the events of this episode never actually took place. Wow, the just the dream trope seems to be an easy way for writers to have a field day, a way for them to use potentially series changing plot points and twists, and explore much darker themes like the ones we saw in the Tom and Jerry episode. Whether it's a dream or not, it's still pretty upsetting to see Phineas and Ferb lose their creativity and become lifeless husks of what they once were. The Powerpuff Girls create a fourth sister, and then she explodes. The original Powerpuff Girls series has its fair share of adult and dark humor every now and then. Rewatching the series with a more mature mindset, you might catch a lot of jokes you missed as a child. However, the episode Twisted Sister is one of the few episodes that is dark throughout the entire runtime, actually featuring a character, Die. The episode begins with the girls coming home from a long day of crime fighting, only to be told that they have to do chores. They're very tired, so they decide to create a fourth Powerpuff Girl in order to help them with all their crime fighting and chores. Unfortunately, they don't have the main ingredients, being sugar, spice, and everything nice, so they make do with what they have. The end result is Bunny, a large, hunchback girl who isn't too bright. Okay, it's your job to fly around and keep Townsville safe from crime. And when you catch the bad guys, bam, pow, you beat them up. And then throw them in jail. Understand? Understand? Mm -hmm. They tell her to go fight crime, but she misunderstands and throws the police officers in jail and lets the criminals roam free. The girls scold Bunny, causing her to run off upset. They then find themselves overwhelmed by criminals and in need of help. Bunny comes back to their aid and saves them, but then after the girls praise Bunny, she just... just out of nowhere. The ending is somber and depressing, as the girls hang their heads in shame, knowing that their meanness costed Bunny her life. Bunny's sudden death is both hilarious and alarming. One could take it as a jab at other shows who introduce major characters late into a show in order to gain views. Like Poochie from The Simpsons, Bunny is killed off in a comedic way at the end and is never seen again. Brian and Stewie just like South Park and The Simpsons, Family Guy is no stranger to dark and messed up humor. In fact, nowadays, that's all the show essentially is. 
So in order for an episode to make this list, it has to be exceedingly dark and different from the usual. And again, much like the South Park episode, this one is a very different kind of dark. The episode Brian and Stewie is very different from your normal episode of Family Guy. There are no cutaways, very little music, one setting, and no other characters besides Brian and Stewie, both voiced by Seth MacFarlane. The episode revolves around the pair going through Brian's safety deposit box at the bank. However, the door closes on them at the end of the bank day, leaving them trapped inside the vault until next morning. Or so they think, because it's actually Saturday, meaning that they're stuck there until Monday morning. From here on out, the episode is just the two of them, alone, talking. It begins with Stewie soiling himself out of fear, and then forcing Brian to eat the feces, worried that it'll give him a rash if he doesn't get rid of it. He forces him with a gun, which turns out Brian kept in his deposit box. Stewie, come on, you don't know how to use that thing. Oh really? What if I hold it sideways like a black guy? Whoa, 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 come on man, take it easy, alright? I, I don't want any trouble. There's not gonna be any trouble as long as you eat my poo! Stewie also uses the last bit of battery in his cell phone to call a clothing store rather than call for help. Brian hits him, causing Stewie to tear up. Physical abuse is usually played out for laughs in this show, but here it's shown a bit more realistically, with Brian instantly feeling remorseful. The two become drunk off of some scotch that Brian kept in the box, and their discussion soon turns into hurtful insults. He then causes the gun to be shot prematurely, sending the two hiding under the table. After sobering up, Stewie asks Brian why he kept a gun in his safety deposit box, to which he reveals that it's in case he ever wants to commit suicide. The scotch was meant to be his last drink. Oh. Oh my god, you're, you're serious. But why, Brian? Brian confesses that he has no purpose in life, and he finds comfort knowing that he has the option to kill himself. Yesterday, when you said, I don't live with purpose, you were right. I don't. What purpose does my life have? You know, I've tried to find meaning in my life, and I just, I just can't. Stewie then admits that he would be lost without Brian, and that he loves him. Brian tells Stewie that he loves him back. The next morning, the vault door swings open, and Brian carries a sleeping Stewie outside in silence. The credits also roll in silence. While Family Guy is usually seen as a polarizing show due to its cutaways and degrading humor, this episode is a breath of fresh air, and a powerful one at that. For once, we really get to see these characters become characters without the worry of a throwaway joke will come in and interrupt the moment, and it's a deep, dark, intimate moment between Brian and Stewie that maybe the viewer wasn't meant to see, but we did anyways. And despite the character of Brian being not so loved online, hearing him talk about wanting to commit suicide is pretty heart-wrenching, seeing how fragile he really is. Of course, they later ruin it by killing him off in a stupid, silly way, but that's later. Right now in this episode, it's unexpected, it's powerful. It's a dark episode.